I'm gonna take a little break. More ice. More ice. Please. More <laughs> ice. Can we get more ice? Hey, what's going on everybody? For First We Feast, I'm Sean Evans and you're watching Hot Ones. It's the show with hot questions and even hotter wings. And today we're joined by the Nigerian nightmare, Kamaro Usman. He's one of the best pound for pound fighters in the UFC, a dominant and reigning welterweight champion who has defended that title on four straight occasions. But how will he fare today in a 10 round bout against the wings of death? I guess only time will tell. Kamaro Usman, welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. And uh, I made sure I was hungry on the ride here, so. Being of Nigerian descent and being born in Nigeria, I'm accustomed to every meal having some type of kick into it. You know, I'm a little nervous with this one because I've been on a diet for the last literally six years. So I don't think my taste buds are the way they used to be. Now, make sure that's this wing, the one to the far right. Yeah, that's, right. A, that's important to know. All right. <laughs> oh, that's just tangy. I don't know, man, that's tangy. That one's a good wing. So you have a reputation for being one of the best wrestlers in the UFC, a skill set that you started to build as a high school standout and eventually as a collegiate national champion and All-American. I once saw you compare jujitsu to wrestling by posting a picture of a cobra alongside a bear. For those of us who have never done an arm lock or been involved in a takedown in our lives, how do you explain that analogy? You know, coming up in wrestling and doing that for the you know earlier part of my life, you understand that wrestling is kind of like a bear. There's, there's not much you can do when, when someone just, you learn how to completely control and disarm somebody else. Brute force. Yes, just 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 basically mauling someone. But then once I started to get into jujitsu, you realize it's not just about mauling somebody anymore. Someone can lure you to sleep and catch you with something and now you're, you're tangled up in a pretzel and you have no idea how to get out. And so that's basically the analogy, how I compared them, because jujitsu was like, you can play the game, you can kind of just set traps and, and be light, be loose with someone, all of a sudden you got them wrapped up, they either gonna lose an arm or limb or go to cho choke, get choked unconscious. So that was the analogy between both, is basically pick your poison. So a trick that I do with the flat, I get in here and I find these bones, Hold it from the back end. We're gonna twist a couple times. Get that bone out. Now that's all me. See that? We're not wasting none of that. I'm Nigerian, so you gotta learn, you know, <laughs> over time you so you don't don't waste any of that. Mm. Oh, that's light work. Oh, 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 wait, there. <laughs> what? I've heard you talk about having an interest in the science of the mind. And when you say that you're reading someone's body, what do you mean by that? Like, can you really pick up on like a physical difference between a fighter who's confident and one who doubts themselves? Yes, I can big time. Me, my style, I like to break guys mentally. I want them to wilt. That's what I want. I, I want to break them internally to where after this fight, they will remember this for the rest of their lives. And the biggest way to do that is fatigue. Fatigue makes coward of everyone. And so I have to be able to read them and see when that fatigue is starting to set in. When someone's hurt, they, there's certain signs that they display. Like when the fight starts, they're very active. You can tell they have this, this scowl on their face and that means they're, they're activated, they're ready to hurt you and kill you at any moment. But then when they start to fatigue, that scowl slowly starts to go away. The hands aren't as high anymore. They aren't as activated. But these are all signs for me. These are all go signs. Once I start to see these signs, I start to step on that gas and I want to break you inside. Remember the trick I just showed you. So let's yep. let we Look twist, at that. Get Look a at that couple clean. Twists. Look at that clean. Didn't waste no meat there. You know, back in the day, if you wasted this meat in Nigeria, everybody would look at you crazy. <laughs> Yo, it's good food right there. Find it, find it. Out of there. 
third one. Oh yeah, that one got a little bit. But the third like one's in. Smoky, peppery. Yeah, through the nose to too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So one thing that I've noticed watching UFC events where you're not on the card is that you have a very polished broadcasting style and seem very comfortable in the booth. Who to you are the most fascinating fighters to watch on tape? Like, can you give me one from the men's side and one from the women's side? There's quite a few, that's a tough one. Right now on the men's side, I would have to say uh, Francis Ngannou, without a doubt. Because uh, kind of like a Mike Tyson, it might be five seconds, it might be five minutes, but someone's about to go to sleep. And that's the deal with Francis Ngannou. It's ridiculous the amount of power that he has. It's it's almost unreal. And so to watch a guy like that be throwing hands at another human being, it's like you just have to see it. Now as a female, this is gonna be my teammate, my you know teammate that I've been with now for the last almost two years, year and a half, Rose Namajunas, who just recently regained her title, UFC 261. You watch her, she's such a killer, and such a savage inside that octagon, but she's just such a flower on the inside. Just like, she'll, she'll cry. Like she cried in the cage, she cried before the fight. You know what a lot of people don't know, she'll cry backstage, she'll like, that, it takes a lot, which it takes a lot for us to do what we do, but she just wears it on her sleeve and then she can turn on that savage, go out there, kick you in the head unconscious. So I think those are the two special fighters that I, I like to watch. Los Caliente, ah. Huh? I think they might have mixed up the order because that last one kicked a little Yeah, hard yeah, the one. three spot does kick a little yeah. bit more in this line. Unless you guys try to set me up for the punch <laughs> coming out for the next one. <laughs> So you hear boxers and MMA fighters talk all the time about sweet spots. Besides the jaw, the chin, which parts of the body are most vulnerable to a kick or hook? The bread basket. That's what they call it. It's a famous term for the stomach. There's a region right here in that stomach, that little upper region, right above, like right in the abs, but the lower abs, that it's, it's, it's very hard even when you flex your abs that spot is still penetrable. You know, if you can land a good punch right there, and especially when the guy exhaling, it'll sit a lot of people down, for sure. If you haven't watched my fights, uh, that's one of the spots where I love to aim. Just a body jab, boom, stick it there. You hit him with a good five or six of those. Now they gotta, they gotta basically recalculate why they got into this fight in the first place. And it doesn't have to be hard. That's that's what you, that's the definition of a sweet spot. It doesn't have to be hard. You could just touch it. And it's like oh, and you see fighters when they when it happens, they try to uh, they make this face. It's the craziest face. And uh, you just got to sit down. You just have to take a moment. And while you're sitting there, hopefully the fighter doesn't jump on you and finish you. But then you have to think about like, man, should I? Is this really what I want to do for a living? You know. It's not bad. Tomasa kicked harder than, than <laughs> Caliente. That's the first half ball. sort of sneaky one, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah. See, I knew they would set me up. I knew, was, <laughs> I knew what you was doing. Trying to set me up. All right. All right, Kamar, we have a recurring segment on our show called Explain That Gram, where we do a deep dive on our guest Instagram, pull interesting pictures that need more context. So we'll show you the picture over here on the monitor. You just tell us the bigger story. What was it like to hit the Grammys with Burner Boy? And is there any special reason that you chose his record, Anybody, to be your walkout song in UFC? It's crazy because music, it, it really speaks to the world. It doesn't matter where you're from, what culture, music always speaks to the world. Like there's there's uh, Chinese kids who can't speak a lick of English or a lick of Yoruba or whatever, and they know the lyrics to all the songs and they're able to sing it. You know, so music just kind of transcends culture, and uh, that's what Brunner Boy kind of stands for. I see myself, in a sense, as as that being able to do something beyond just fighting, beyond making money, that transcends culture, and that's what fighting does too. Fighting speaks to everybody. You could be in a room. I could be teaching a fighter from Moldova uh, a specific move, a jab straight. I don't speak that language. He speaks nothing of English. Understands nothing. He understands this, yes. 
you know, he understands takedowns and, and, and submission. So, you know, we're, we kind of, in a different sense, but we're speaking the same message all across the world. And uh, and him being, dropping that album, African Giant, that spoke to me big time because I consider myself one of those. Let's do it. I do love Chica Marsala. It's a very popular Indian dish. I'm a little, little kick on this one. Oh, it comes back. Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> oh, it sneaks back in there. It's an uppercut. Hmm? So you once said, the principles of what martial arts were built upon are honor, respect, and discipline. And nowadays, we have guys who are solely focused on the entertainment aspect of the game. Is this trend of like YouTubers and internet celebrities invading the world of like pay-per-view prize fighting, is that good for combat sports or not good for combat sports? We live in this day and age to where it's just publicity, good or bad, as long as someone's talking about you, which I never grew up in that. You know, I grew up watching Muhammad Ali and some of the great things that he's done. And some of these great superstars, Michael Jordan and all these people, to where it was never about just trying to be famous. And nowadays, it's just not that. It's not a moral compass anymore. It's just, I just want to be talked about. And for that purpose alone, I mean, it is what it is. If that's that was your, your that's what the idea was, then it, it, it's working. But that's just not something that I'm, I was ever really enticed by or intrigued by. gotta come out sometime, you know, somewhere. <laughs> you know, this has gotta come out. <laughs> mm. There's always a second act to this show. Yeah. It's gotta come out. <laughs> so through the ages, fighters have proven to be great philosophers. And I get the sense that you're somebody who respects the whole mental side of this game. So what I wanna do is hit you with some famous fight quotes from famous fighters, and I'm just curious how they hit your ear, you know? Maybe you agree with them, maybe you disagree with them, maybe it reminds you of something, and we'll just take it from there. Does that sound good? Yeah, it sounds good. <laughs> <coughs> it's under my tongue, so, yeah, it's there. It's, it's, it's just I'm sweating. gonna... I'm sweating, man. Once you've wrestled, everything else in life is easy. That's from Dan Gable. Yeah, that's a um, somewhat accurate statement. I wouldn't say everything else in life. It's not, that's not true. It's still tough parts. Um, do we have cold, cold water? We got a pitcher, pitcher full of ice right there. Yeah, I might just do the pitcher. Just let's go just, for the pitcher. Let's just, let's just do just that. Just go for the pitcher. <laughs> mm, mm hmm. Mm hmm. In the midst of chaos, there's also opportunity. That's from The Art of War. Yeah, I like that quote. Because, um,. In the midst of chaos, you feel like everything's going crazy. There's still that opportunity for you to be able to overcome it and prove something to yourself. I feel like that made it worse. <laughs> <laughs> From Mike Tyson, everybody has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. Absolutely. This one is very, very true because um, in the fight game, we all... Uh, you know, you say what you're gonna do, you say what you can do, and, ooh, wow. And, you know, you, you feel like, oh yeah, I'm gonna, this is how I'm gonna attack this, this is how I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. A couple of times I've been in that situation to where I had a plan of how I thought this fight was gonna go. And then quickly you realize, okay, that, that's, that's not what he had in mind. So now I come in ready to scrap. I don't care where, where, what it's, where it goes, what happens. I'm ready to rumble each time. Got a plan A, got a plan B, got a plan C, everything yeah, going on. absolutely. All right, speaking of having a plan until you get punched in the face, are you ready to move on here to the next wing? It is the bomb beyond insanity. I don't like the name. What, did Israel eat this? Israel had three wings with this. Damn, all right, let's go there. <laughs> mm. oh, that's the barbecue sauce. That ain't bad. From hell. Oh, oh. 
That's not barbecue at all. No. That's not even a wing. What is that? <laughs> it's just, it's been described as poison. I can Battery see acid on the show. Because it's not even, like, you don't even taste the chicken. Have you ever seen that shack face? Like, that, that yeah. thing that goes like that? That was on this one. That wing. was on this one? Yeah, that one even tastes like wing. That's... <laughs> There's no chicken in that. That was nothing. So according to Nigerian recipe writer, Yawande Komolafe, there's a Yoruba saying that goes, the soul that does not eat pepper is a dead soul. Does that ring true to you? I don't know about that. I mean, I think, why are we talking? Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, pepper gives a little extra flavor, you know, and it might, have some benefits for the body, but okay. Gotta figure out something out here. Yeah. This one doesn't really. It's temporary. Mm. Gotta do a one two punch. Bop, bop. There we go. I'm learning here. Mm hmm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Ice. Yeah, it soothes it, but. When we talk, dude. right back up. Mm -hmm. All right. I've heard some dishes like suya and pepper soup, they can get extremely spicy. How would you describe the heat levels in Nigerian food? It's hot. It's hot. More ice. More ice. Please. More ice. Can we get more ice? Mmm. 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 Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. We should talk like this when our mouth closed. Who made that shit? Why? So it, it comes out of Kansas City, Missouri. Oh, my nose running. See, I knew you set me up for some, <laughs> some bullshit. <laughs> mm. That's why you five, four, five and four and five went nothing. It See? gets. You kicked me with the three. You do a nice little liver punch with the three. And then four or five was light, so you can. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Playing chess over here, playing mm -hmm. hot sauce chess Are over clear. here. Yeah, work with this guy. <laughs> all right, all right. Bro, it's just not getting better. I mean, like, my lips are burning. That's not happening usually. Right. right. All right. This is all going in. Mm, I'm just going in. Yeah. It's like pouring <laughs> gasoline on fire. God. Ooh. That wasn't easier. Coming in with ice. We're coming in with ice. So before your UFC career, I read that you worked as a tour guide at the Olympic Training Center. Did you have a favorite training center fun fact or a item of interest on the tour when you were a tour guide there? Um, yeah, when people come in, when the, when the guests come in, we take them into the, like, the, there's a theater in there. And we sit them all down and we, uh, we play this video for them. It's like a video past Olympic moments. But it got you so hyped. When you come out of that room watching that video, you're in the Olympic spirit. I was like, man, I can bobsled. I can do this. <laughs> Sometimes I would just play the video myself, sitting there and watch it. Getting the Olympic spirit made me want to train harder and compete harder. We shouldn't talk when we eat. <laughs> right. We You're telling talk. me. As you shake the last one. <laughs> this is the last dab. We call it the last dab because it's tradition around here to put a little extra on the last wave. Bro. You don't have to. You don't have to. Bro. You don't have to. Bro, you do extra now. Come on. 
You don't have to if you don't want to. No, but you can't do it and have me not do it. <laughs> Just got to be surgical. All right, let's see. You said as long as you touch the wing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Boom, that's a drop. <laughs> I'm gonna do two drops just cause, cause you know, we've been going hard. All right, boom, it's two drop. <coughs> that bomb was a bomb, yeah. Cheers. Cheers. <sighs> I don't like the way you reacted to that. Oh. Six years, couple hundred <laughs> episodes, never gets easier. Oh. Why did I swallow? All right, come on, Usman. Here we are at the end of our main event. We've taken on 10 chicken wings and just one more question for you before we send you on your way. As we've learned today, you have an enduring spirit, impossible to break. You've defended your championship four times and show no signs of slowing down. Do you put all of your MMA wins, all of your title defenses on the same plane? Or is there one fight or moment that means more to you than the rest? Put a majority of them all on the same plane because each and every fight presents a different challenge. But I would say one of my favorite is when this kid was jaw jacking too much, talking all this trash, saying that he was gonna do this, he was gonna leave me on a stretcher. You know, I'm Donald Trump's favorite fighter. I'm this and that and all of the above brought in religion, talked about my, my family, my former manager, my current manager. He just did everything possible. Then to go in there and actually physically break his jaw, then knock his ass out, was, was probably one of my favorites. <laughs> well, you know what? Just like that Olympic video, the hype spirit, I feel exactly the same way right now, taking on the wings of death and living to tell the tale. <laughs> And now, my friend, there's nothing left to do but roll out the red carpet for you. This camera, that camera, that camera. Let the people know what you have going on in your life. Bro, oh, man, um, well, I just ate all these wings, and I know it's gonna have to come out somehow. So, um, oh, I'm excited. I'm excited for that challenge. I'm excited to see what's the next chapter, what happens in my life. I'm just blessed to be in this time, in this day and age, to uh, see so many things happening, not just in fighting, not just in my life, but in the world. I'm thankful. Great job. Thank you. Great job. Mm. Why? Who, like, who, who, who goes home and says, yeah, I want the bomb on my wings? You're like, who the f <laughs> No. <laughs> oh, shit. Hey, what's going on, Spice Lords? Camera Guy Bill here with a very special announcement. June 14th is right around the corner, and do you know what that means? Flag Day! And what better way to celebrate Flag Day than by showing your Hot Ones pride with some brand new Hot Ones flags from Buffalo's very own Oxford Pennant. From the birthplace of the chicken wing and the show that made eating the hottest sauces known to man a global sensation comes a collaboration for the ages. The Oxford Pennant Hot Ones collection is Spice Lord approved and Sean Evans certified. Your favorite Hot Ones-isms are immortalized in a series of pennants, camp flags, banners, and pins. Fully designed and manufactured in my hometown, the spiciest city in America, Buffalo, New York. If there's one thing I love about Buffalo, it's that it's given you such national treasures as the Chicken Wing, the Buffalo Bills, Tony Soprano's mom, Rick James, Camera Guy Bill, and the hottest collaboration of the year. Get yours today at shop.firstweefeast.com. That's shop.firstweefeast.com. Happy Flag Day!